What's up guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com in Brooklyn, New York, and today I am joined by the very, very brilliant and esteemed man behind the cavalier.com, Mr. John Shanahan. Now looking like a hobo. Yeah. After a year in quarantine. It's a kind of like a refined hobo that only like a guy who knows everything about style can pull off. Yeah. And that, that, is, that, is John, that is John Shanahan. Um, thank you very much for coming on the channel. He's come down to New York to hang out. Um, I really wanted to work with John on this video because, uh, as you know, I do a lot of stuff on like leather boots and leather jackets and the leather bags and canvas jackets and this kind of stuff. But I don't know an awful lot about like nicer leather shoes and that, and that sort of stuff, like on the, on the less casual end of the spectrum. And right between those two areas, and John has a lot of expertise in like the, the nicer area of fashion and building like a nice wardrobe from scratch, we have driving shoes which are often coming from really high quality leather, they often have really like nice construction, but it's more specialized and uh, it's, it's sort of like a different realm than I'm used to. So we wanted to do a guide to driving shoes, like what are driving shoes, why they might be useful for you and your wardrobe and how to make them work and the uh, best brands to look out for based on different tiers of prices. What's, what's a driving shoe? That was a nice intro. Nice. <laughs> what I like about drivers though is this in a similar way that boots have this heritage in a lot of like rugged style and and there's a heritage nature to boots that they were used for a certain purpose, right? They're used to protect your feet a lot of times in war, but drivers have that but on the racing side. So you, you do get similar qualities where you're looking at you can get incredibly nice leathers in a driving shoe, but the purpose of them is to grip your foot to a pedal. That's what they're for. And so, whereas a boot, you might get it for construction, you might get it for outdoor work, a driving shoe, you're gonna wear this and it's gonna be the best thing you can wear to make sure your foot is comfortable, but also you have good grip on the pedal if you are racing. A lot of the best driving shoes also have like traditional materials and like kind of traditional construction as well, right? Like so, sort of in the same way where, uh, if you really wouldn't have the absolute best boot for work, like maybe you wouldn't even go with leather. You'd find some synthetic space age polymer or whatever else. Like you can get more advanced than like the traditional heritage materials, but there's also like a really nice middle ground you can get, which I feel like is what you can get with, with driving shoes as well, right? Yeah, and, this, and it, there's a similar like style spectrum with the drivers as well, where you're not really going to wear them in every scenario. And actually you can wear them pretty wrong, which we'll talk about in a second here. But we can talk about like what is a driver at its core, right? And at the core, it's a shoe like this that has a specific grip, which is for gripping the pedal. But there's a fine line between like a house slipper and a loafer. So mm -hmm. a driving shoe is not a loafer, which usually has a stacked heel or some sort of leather heel. And it's not a house slipper, which usually doesn't have enough traction for the driving or the function you'd want. And it's also not really a like a walking shoe or an activity shoe. They wear out really fast. Like these nubs, they are durable and they are grippy, but they will wear out really fast. So this is not something that you wear on a trip and you're gonna be walking a lot, even though they are pretty comfortable for that. And we actually have these shoes from Sabai. I know you know a little bit more about these, but these were the closest thing that you had to a driving shoe, which is very close. This is like a functional house slipper, essentially. So this has the rubber sole, which is very similar. These can actually be resold. A key trait or a, a knowing trait of a driver, you can't resole these. I mean, once, oh, really? once you wear these out, they're gone. Oh yeah, you're right. There's like not much of a barrier, a difference between the, the sole and the upper. Yeah, and you'll see on driving shoes, they don't all have these nubs exactly. Some of them will have like a wider tread on the heel and then there's a you know one on the ball of your foot, but they all have these rubber treads. Some of them will have like a, a flat surface, but for the most part, they can't be resold. What are the best brands for driving shoes? Well, there's three tiers and you can go up, you know, as high as you want. So the, the top of the top is Todd's Mox. They really like invented the driving shoe. They're like the luxury option, but you can get a few for the under $100 price point. Before I get into the, the brands though, mm. I do want to specify that the driving loafer is very similar to the boat shoe and the number of ways that it is misused in the style world because it is not a dress shoe. You do not wear them with suits. You don't wear them with business casual. That's probably one of my bigger pet peeves. If, if a guy is wearing like a nice button down shirt, khakis and a boat shoe, it's mostly thrown off, unless you're out at the beach. Go to the beach, wear yeah. your boat shoes. Drivers are similar. It's like I see these mistaken a lot for a dress shoe because the upper is very much like a loafer, but you don't have the sole to then back it up and that's what changes the the real look and the real functionality of the shoe. Where I mostly see them is uh, is the under $100 price point and Cole Haan is gonna be the one that everyone's going to know that makes uh, a driving shoe. And what you're getting in the under $100 price point is you're getting the functionality, right? You're getting the, the rubber sole, you're getting the stitched moccasin upper, but you're not usually looking at the nicest leather. 
it's gonna be a genuine leather mm -hmm. or some kind of like subpar quality leather, but you're still gonna get that look. If you wanna figure out if this fits into your life, get an under $100 shoe, it'll last you for two summers, and then you can move up from there. The other brand that's under $100, and I actually wear these as my house slippers, is Minnetonka. If you wanna go with Cole Haan, those are a little bit more refined. Minnetonka actually makes some really nice house slippers and drivers, and uh, they're all hand-stitched, so it's a pretty cool brand to take a look at. Very cool. And then above $100, when you get, is that's actually when you get some really nice leathers. You get some you know, calfskin leathers, you can get some full grain leathers, and the brands that are up in that $100 to $150 price point are gonna be brands like M. Jemmy, which is a new DTC player. You have Jack Irwin, which these I actually thought were Jack Irwin. That's how close these are. These are uh, Paul Evans. We'll talk about these in the luxury space. And there's another brand out of France called Bobby's. They have some really nice dress shoes, but their drivers in particular, they hit that really perfect sweet spot of like they have really nice suede, but they're actually not super expensive. And so Bobby's another brand to take a look at. And then right around that price point too, we have Sabah. Sabah. <laughs> made, made in Turkey. Yeah, the, this Turkish leather, it's like, it's, like, it's like modeled after like traditional shoes um, from Turkey. And they're resolvable, which is interesting. They're made with like one thread going all the way through it. Um, yeah, you can see it on the outside and you can see it on the inside here. Yeah, yeah. So it's not exactly, it's not the same as a lot of like uh, more traditional driving shoes, but you get like a decent amount of like rubbery grip here. And the upper is like, it's really nice, interesting leather. A little bit more durable than like a lot of other driving shoes. Yeah. So some people might not consider it strictly a driving shoe, but this is, this is the shoe that I have that is the closest to a driving shoe. And it can, it can work pretty well in that regard as well. Yeah, this reminds me of a, um, in, in Morocco, they have slippers like this. Like yeah. it's like the standard and it's like this kind of silhouette is very standard there. Yeah. And then, so we, going up in price, this is where I feel like you start to disconnect from reality a little bit is in the luxury <laughs> space. Yeah, yeah. So Todd's Mox is really what pushed the driver as a shoe and they have incredible leathers. I mean, if you look at them, wear them, smell them, like amazing, they're made in Italy. But again, it's like, this is a shoe that probably won't last more than two to three years if you're wearing them a lot. And so these are shoes that you, know, you wear them as a house slipper or something else. It's like, it's a luxury shoe. These ones here are actually from Paul Evans. Paul mm -hmm. Evans are up, they're above $300. They, they've moved the price around quite a bit. And I would say if you want something a little bit nicer than you know the other brands we talked about, these aren't completely disconnected from reality because mm -hmm. the Italian leather that Paul Evans uses is amazing. I have their sneakers, I have their leather sneakers, I have their dress shoes, but their drivers, they, they do actually you know, punch above their weight class as far as Todd's goes. And then as a proper American, let me butcher the name Aurelian, which would be another luxury driver. Those are around the 250, almost $300 price point. Uh, but those are again, gonna be calfskin leathers, handmade. Uh, you know, if you're not quite ready to go to Todd's, then uh, at $500, then <laughs> you can go with Arlene. What's in the soul of a, of a driver? Like they don't have like a cork midsole or shock absorbing foam or any kind of yeah, stuff, Yeah, there's right? been brands that have tried to do comfort versions of the driving shoe, but what it ends up doing is bulking up the shoe. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen them around very long. It's just like a foam insole. It's not, it's nothing uh, crazy revolutionary, which is part of why it's not meant to be resold. Right, I would imagine like kind of the point of a driving shoe is to have like a very little amount of uh, material between your foot and the pedals, because the point to have like sort of a, a more tactile sensation exactly. when you're driving and to grip it very well. You can wear it elsewhere besides the house and the car, you're saying. You said yes. sometimes you'll take it to the to a, to a park or something. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a, it's a great like casual wear shoe. It's not like a business casual, business formal, don't wear it with a suit, but it is great for many other scenarios, except for a lot of activity, that's the thing. Like it, it yeah, threads yeah. a very specific needle because you don't want to wear them out. I end up wearing a pair as, a ho as like a house shoe because it's like durable, but it's, you know, I keep it clean in the house. And so that's why yeah. I'm using it for. If you think you're gonna be walking for more than like a half hour during your outing, then maybe it's not quite for you. But like, yeah. otherwise it sounds like you can like wear them to the movies, they're comfy for that. You can, you can obviously wear them in the car, you can go road tripping in them, you can do all sort of stuff. It's almost like a shoe not for New Yorkers. It's like for the yeah. person who gets in the car, drives somewhere, gets out of the car, gets it, it's like, that's the suburban life. Yeah. But I, I mean, you can walk to the bodega in them, but yeah. Uh, it's definitely not something you want to take a hike. No, that, that makes sense. That's why I'm really glad that you uh, you came on the channel to uh, give the, the non-New York insight, because uh, in New York, every day it's a minimum of like three hours spent walking, and exactly. it's all upstairs in some ways. That's when you need boots. Yeah, great, okay, cool. This is really interesting, man. Thank you very much for coming on the channel and uh, letting us know 
about the best driving shoes. And um, we've also put a, an article in the description below if you want to check that out and learn even more. And um, we'll throw a couple extra picks in there as well because probably not many people want to spend uh, 45 minutes watching us talk about driving shoes, but we're gonna we're gonna flesh out the article a little bit and you can check that out as well. Great, thanks for having me on. Nate. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, make make absolutely certainly subscribe to the Cavalier. By the way, I got a link to that in the description below as well. Um, it's really really good stuff. John spends like a bit more time talking about how to dress up well and has like a wider sort of a spectrum of different like fashion stuff that he uh, looks at on his channel. Everything looks at is very high quality and he does more, there's a bit more of an emphasis on uh, dressier stuff and smart casual stuff that I don't do a lot of on my channel. So uh, we're good similar companions. Th similar through lines. You want good stuff for the best price. Yes. So you don't want luxury, but you don't want the fast fashion. Yeah. All right, The Cavalier, check it out. Uh, subscribe here as well because you kind of wound up here and um, comment below with your favorite driving shoes if you got one. The question is how French do you go with your pronunciation? Aurelien? Yeah. I would Aurelien? say Aurelien. Aurelien? It's, it's, it's Aurelien. Aurelien. It's, Aurelien. But, but I would say Aurelien. I think you can get away with that. Okay. Or you can say Aurelien. You can, that's, that's, that'll balance it out. Okay.